So my issue is mainly that atlantoaxial joint is the most mobile joint, and atlantoaxial joint is the most unstable joint. So mobility and more you want to have, more the problems you can have. So I want to raise this issue about basilar invagination, about seringomyelia, about Chiari formation. You see the term? Not Chiari malformation, but Chiari formation. And how these three problems are related to atlantoaxial instability. So that is what I'm going to talk about. So Chiari malformation, as we all know, is a very common clinical entity. As Dr. Chen was saying that uh, basilar invagination more common in Asia, more common in China and India, but Chiari malformation throughout the world. So Chiari malformation uh, formation and seringomyelia are common clinical associations. Seringobulbia is relatively uncommon, but it is present. Seringobulbia, Chiari, and seringomyelia. Basilar invagination Chiari malformation, seringomyelia is a common clinical trial. So these three things are very commonly present together. Manifest or radiologically identifiable atlantoaxial instability in Chiari is a very rare clinical event. Chiari malformation without bone malformation, no bone mal abnormality in the craniovertebral junction is a much more common clinical entity. So my question comes, when there is Chiari and syrinx with bone malformation, and when there is Chiari and syrinx without bone malformation, are these completely different problems? Like the literature says, I am absolutely clear about it. They are one and the same problem. If I ask every one of you here sitting, I ask you, what is the treatment of Chiari malformation? Even I heard one presentation yesterday about craniectomy, and then some people do C1 laminectomy, some people do C2 laminectomy, some people do tonsillectomy, some people do arachnoidal dissection, some people introduce a syringo, some in introduce a tube here, some people do syring subarachnoid shunt. Everybody has a different treatment. The problem is everybody thinks he's correct. That is the problem. So I want to give you a different perspective to this. So in the year 2013, about six years ago, I wrote this article, is atlantoaxial instability the cause of Chiari malformation? It means atlantoaxial fixation is the treatment of Chiari malformation. So that is a quite a quite an, uh, change in the thinking process of Chiari malformation. And many of you have heard about this article. Another thing is, is Chiari a formation or is it a malformation? Is it good for the patient or is it bad for the patient? Is it pathological problem or is it a divine intervention which protects the neural structures? Another, as I mentioned earlier, I want to introduce to you another dramatic concept of central or axial atlantoaxial instability, which completely changes, which completely changes the thought process of craniovertebral junction anomaly. In 1998, somebody was just now asking me, in 1998, I wrote this article. This article is quite a heavily cited article, more than 380 citations. In 1998, 20 years ago, my concept was that basilar invagination is associated with fixed atlantoaxial instability, fixed. Very important. So because the anomaly is fixed, decompression was the treatment. In 1998, I divided basilar invagination into two groups. In one group, the odontoid process goes up, and in the second group, tonsil comes down. So we recommended 
20 years ago that these patients need transoral decompression. These patients need foramen magnum decompression. Anomaly is fixed. Decompression is the treatment. So that was the concept 20 years ago. We also said for the first time that for Chiari malformation, there is no need to open the dura. Some people do not open the dura, some people open the dura, some people open the arachnoid. So there are n number of treatments. Then comes this entity when we started maneuvering or manipulating the joint, we realized that there are some cases in 2004. Now in 2004, I introduced new classification, group A and group B. Group A where I could distract the facet and reduce the dislocation. In 2004, we divided basilar invagination into two groups, one which was unstable and can be reduced, and one which was not, which was stable and irreducible. So this classification in 2002, group A and group B. So for group A, we described that you can distract and reduce the basilar invagination. Group A, we described that you can do cranio-vertebral junction realignment. And this was the concept that we introduced. That in these cases, there is listhesis of C1 over C2. Distract and reduce the listhesis. That was the treatment that we described. But still we described that there was an entity where we need to do foramen magnum decompression in 2004, group B. In 2005, we identified some cases of Chiari malformation and syringomyelia where there was a listhesis of C1 over C2, and we described cranio-vertebral junction realignment as the treatment, and we said that foramen magnum decompression is not necessary in 2005. We also said beautiful you know, this was a tremendously different kind of understanding that syringomyelia is not harmful. It is a protective natural mechanism and syringosubarachnoid shunt is a negative operation. And after that, I have to tell you that number of papers describing shunts have dramatically reduced in the world. Similarly, for Chiari malformation, we said that when there is a tumor and Chiari, removal of tumor is necessary. We said that Chiari malformation is never a primary event. Syringomyelia is never a primary event. It is related to a problem, and that problem is atlantoaxial instability. This was another beautiful article of mine where we said that short neck, torticollis, clipal file abnormality, bone fusion, C1 assimilation, CP3 fusion, spina bifida, platybasia, all these problems are not embryological problems. They are secondary and secondary to atlantoaxial instability. So they are protective maneuvering by the divine nature. So you do atlantoaxial fixation and you can have immediate in the evening of operation return of long neck and return of improvement in torticollis in 100% of patients, 100%. So there is no need to do special maneuvering for the atlantoaxial joint, uh, for the torticollis. Atlantoaxial instability is the cause and all other things, musculoskeletal abnormalities, bone fusions, bone deformations are secondary protective maneuvering. We also introduced a new term called external syringomyelia. You see there is a extra water in the spinal canal, extra water in the cranial fossa, and it was identified that the posterior fossa is not tight and decompression is not necessary in Chiari malformation. These bone fusions, we identified that they are secondary events to atlantoaxial instability. As I mentioned earlier, 
Earth's bifid arch of Atlas is a dynamic process and it moves on flexion and extension is a plate tectonics. So what happens is at Lanto actual the instability happens and no, lot of lot of natural things happen that protect the spine and spinal cord. So we have mentioned about all these things about natural protection of bifid and how bifid is a, not like spina bifida which is a problem but this bifid is a protection. Similarly, we said bone fusions are not a problem, but they are protection. If you see the literature, entire literature for last 50 years, these are the parameters to describe instability. One is this, one is atlantodental interval problem, and one is that we had described in, in 2004, this facetal listhesis. Then we changed this classification and we introduced a new classification on the basis of facetal alignment. So carefully see these slides, please. I want you to see these slides carefully. Now this is a known problem and this is atlantodental interval disturbance known to be unstable spine. This is a facet of C1 is over the facet of C2. This is known to be abnormal and this is an indicator for stabilization. So this I term as group one atlantoaxial instability. Now this is the another one. Group B we had called basilar invagination where there is no atlantodental interval disturbance. And we had recommended group B foramen magnum decompression. But when we realize, you see the facets here, the facet of C1 is behind the facet of C2. So there is a facetal malalignment. I call it type two facetal malalignment and I said that these patients do not need foramen magnum decompression. These patients need atlantoaxial stabilization. Atlantoaxial instability is the problem. No need to include occipital bone in this construct. Of course, to do this operation is not easy. It is difficult, but it is possible, and that is the best operation. You see here, there is Chiari malformation and there is basilar invagination. There is no atlantodental interval disturbance, but there is a facetal malalignment. So the treatment is atlantoaxial stabilization. No need for foramen magnum decompression. The syrinx will reduce. More importantly, the patient will dramatically improve in the evening of operation. Group B basilar invagination, as we know, you please see the posterior cranial fossa is not tight. Foramen magnum decompression is not necessary. Facetal instability is the problem, and facetal stabilization is the solution. Decompre decompression is not the problem, solution. Instability is the issue, stabilization is the solution. So in 2012, we identified now I changed. I changed in 2012. So 1998, different philosophy. 2004, different philosophy. 2012, different philosophy. I said all basilar invaginations are unstable, and all basilar invagination needs stabilization. So we, we published several articles of group A basilar invagination and group B basilar invagination, where we did atlantoaxial fixation and no decompression, and this we had published in World Neurosurgery some years ago. So this is, then we introduce another fantastic concept that even when there is no atlantodental interval issue, there is no facetal malalignment, there is no compression of the neural structures, there is Chiari malformation, this we introduce the term central or actual atlantoaxial instability, even group type two is also central, there is no atlantodental interval disturbance. And we said that Chiari